Welcome to Bite Sized. My name is Vaida Joshi, and I want to tell you today about Leonard Euler and the creation of graph theory. So in order to tell this story, we got to go way back to 1735. There was this little town uh, called Konigsberg. And Konigsberg was actually seven separate settlements. And the reason that it was seven separate settlements is because there was this little river called the Pregel River that kind of went through this town in a really funny kind of way. And these seven settlements were scattered around the town. But over time, the settlements turned into a more established city, which is what we call Konigsberg. And the city was connected with bridges. Specifically, there were seven bridges that connected these former settlements. So back in 1735, I guess there weren't a lot of things to do when you were bored, so people had to improvise. They had a game that involved walking over every single one of the seven bridges in the town, but only walking over each bridge once. And they used to take these long walks and try to solve this puzzle, but nobody could actually seem to do it. Word spread to another neighboring town where a mathematician heard about it. You might have actually heard of this mathematician. His name was Carl Gottlieb Ehler. Ehler heard about Konigsberg and its interesting problem, and he actually wrote to one of his other mathematician friends, because you know mathematicians are friends with other mathematicians, of course. And he wrote to his friend named Leonard Euler. And he's like, hey, Leonard, here's this interesting problem. Have you heard about Konigsberg? It's so interesting. Like. I'm sure you could help me figure it out. You're a mathematician, you're into this, right? What do you think the solution is? And Leonard, Leonard's got a little bit of an ego and he's just like, oh, I don't, this is too easy of a problem. Like I'm, I'm kind of above this, I don't need to solve it. So Leonard starts thinking about this. He doesn't take it seriously at first, but then the more he considers this problem, he realizes, hey, Actually, I can't solve this that easily. I mean, I can't use geometry, I can't use algebra, I can't even count my way through this. He actually spent enough time contemplating it that he came up with a proof that he published in the form of a paper. And the proof is called Solutio Problem Problematis Ad Geometrium Citus Pertinentius? Pertinentius? Something? That proof actually proves that the Konigsberg problem is not solvable. Even though Leonard Euler found out that this Konigsberg problem was impossible, his work on that paper and writing that proof led him to creating a whole new branch of mathematics, which we now know today as graph theory. So Konigsberg eventually became part of Prussia and Prussia eventually dissolved to become Russia. In World War II, Konigsberg ended up taking a whole lot of damage as a result of allies bombing the town. Two of the bridges in Konigsberg ended up being bombed by the allies in 1942, and two more bridges were demolished in order to make room for a highway. These days, there actually isn't even a Konigsberg at all because it's known as Kaliningrad. And it still is in Russia. And in fact, Kaliningrad now has five bridges, which means that that impossible bridge problem is actually possible. Konigsberg and Leonard Euler's work on solving that impossible problem ended up having a really special place in history not just because of the new branch of, math, branch of mathematics that was created as a result, but also because of all the other fields that it ended up impacting as well, including the entire field of computing. So for that, thanks, Leonard. Coming up next, a quick word from our sponsors, plus a preview of the next episode of Bite Sized. Hi there, I'm Ben, founder of Dev, and this is my colleague, Ruby. Today's episode of Bite Size was sponsored by Heroku, which we use at Dev to power our site. It scales up, it scales down, it really gets out of the way when we need it to. I left an article below the video really going into the nuance of why we use it, why you might want to use it for your company or your personal project, and I hope you check that out. Thanks to Heroku for being a sponsor of this whole video series. It's been really, really helpful. 
And now a preview of the next episode of Bite Sized. What do you think, Ruby? Thoughts, Heroku? Ruby? I thought so. So Herman Hollerith was an inventor who lived back in the 1800s and he was living in the US at the time and he worked on something really interesting, the American census. So I'm just gonna read the Italian or whatever it is. Is it Latin maybe? Or maybe it is Latin. <laughs> it feels like it should be a language I can understand because it feels kind of like a little Spanish, a little Italian, but then I read it and I'm like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Should have taken Latin in school, it would have helped me. Probably not. <laughs>